had the silly thing in reverse. Shut up! What? I said quiet! What's the matter? You deep or something? Nope. Wrong. Yes, again. You know what? I'm happy. When I say whoa, I mean whoa! Welcome back to my channel. Thanks loads to the subscribers that subscribe to the channel. As I keep saying in all the videos, it, it really does matter getting some encouragement to do this because if the subscribers start dropping, then I'll probably give up. So I do enjoy doing it and it's nice to kind of feel this community thing. And I love it when people comment and I've made some friends on here, which is really good. So thank you for subscribing and for watching the videos. This is slightly different. So I don't know if this will appeal to everybody. When I first did the booktube newbie tag, one of the questions was, what would you bring to booktube? And I knew I'd collected certain things that might be a little bit off the beaten track that might spark people's interest. And one of the things that I haven't done over the two years since I've been doing this, but it's about the time I did, was showing some of the books I've got on animation. So I'm going to show 15 books on animation because you might not know they exist. Some of the books here I didn't know exist that they existed one until I started researching into it and two when I just found them randomly in the shop so you may not know about these and you may be interested in them I absolutely love animation always have done since I was a kid I was a huge fan of of cartoons but obviously as you get older you just appreciate more uh general adult uh, orientated animation as well but there are so many things that are fantastic about so many different animation studios and different periods of animation different styles of animation i love stop motion animation i love some of the cgi stuff as well the 2d cell animation is amazing um there's loads loads of great stuff out there i actually taught um a level two unit on animation um two years running recently um and i was able to really sell the idea of how great animation is in those lessons because uh, you can do so much with it and it's such a special art form, I think. So, uh, you know, I've I've got collections of um, Warner Brothers stuff from the Looney Tunes period. I've got collections of Hanna Barbera stuff, like the Wacky Races and all that sort of stuff. I've got Ren and Stimpy um, box set. I've got um, loads of Pixar stuff. For most of the Pixar films, I think we own as a family. We've got obviously loads of Disney stuff. I've got. I, I remember buying my daughter a Betty Boop videos. Um, I mean, you could mention anything really, trapdoor. There's so many different ways I could talk about why animation means so much to me anyway in general. But I do like looking at how these animators came up with their ideas, how they work together, and some of the sketches that you can see in some of these books and that kind of thing. So these books, I think, are quite a revelation sometimes. It covers quite a range of studios, quite a range of periods, and uh, you might find something that you like in here, so... Uh, I'm going to start off with my favourite general book on animation by the great Leonard Moulton of Mice and Magic. So clearly a play on words from the um, of Mice and Men. The Mice and Magic History of American Animated Cartoons. This is a really good overall history that covers all of the major studios and some of the independent stuff as well as you go on through the later years and the way that uh, the earliest animation techniques were developed and some of the pioneers and some of the great moments in animation. So uh, this is a really, really good general book. So if you get a chance to see this, it's really good. Leonard Moulton is a bit of an expert on film. Uh, you, know, you might know him from the film guides he used to release. Does he still release them? I don't know. Um, his film, a film guide still something that people would buy? I don't know. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Because the streaming age seems to have killed that a bit. I don't know. Has it killed that a bit? I don't know. Maybe I'm completely wrong. But his film guides were awesome. But this is a really good book. Uh, that he wrote on animation cartoons. I'm going to move on to two books now that are about Tex Avery. So this is such a special book for me. Um, it was one of the earliest books I got on animation. Probably, it might have been my first one I ever bought on animation. When I found it, I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my God, a book about Tex Avery. And I was already uh, really into his stuff. Uh, he's absolutely the king of timing. So he's the king of comedy in animation, I think. And uh, some of his, some of his cartoons like Bad Luck Blackie and um, King Size Canary 
Little Rural Riding Hood. Um, those kind of cartoons, the timing is insane. And if you're locked into it, you'll be laughing for ages after it's finished. Uh, some of it's dated, you know. Um, I mean, that just goes without saying some of this stuff's dated. But um, as far as comedy goes, there is no one that could have could beat Tex Avery. And he's had a huge influence. And, and obviously, if you watch the original uh, film of The Mask, which made... Jim Carrey and um, thingy, what's her name? <laughs> I've forgotten her name. Uh, the lead actress in it. Those two mega famous. Um, Why well, can't I remember her name? In the mask, most of the jokes are ripped off of Tex Avery cartoons or spins on it. Um, some of them are literally lifted off uh, Tex Avery cartoons. I, th I generally think he should have got some sort of co-writing credit for. Um, for that film I used to rant about that when I was younger but yeah so that's a great book and it's just to go sorry uh, moving on there quickly there's loads of interviews with him and there's loads of uh, uh, images of him at work and there's interviews with um, I know there's interviews with Michael Maltese who was his lead writer and uh, there's his sketches there's little tidbits of information like um I know in this book you find out that a lot of the voices in the Tex Avery cartoons are his voice, the Tex Avery's voice, which is quite funny. Some of the uh, sort of voice from New York, uh, that kind of thing. And there's a, there's a great one here that I've kept in all wrapped up. I'll, I'll wrap it back up again in a minute. This is a this was another big find. One of those moments when we didn't have a lot of money at the time, and it was like I don't know, it was about thirty quid or something. And uh, we st we went for it anyway because it's such a find, and uh, we were like, "Oh, let's do it anyway." And uh, it's a really lovely book, and yeah, I mean, again, it's got these sketches, these designs, as well as uh, more like kind of actual cells that are reprinted. But there's not as much writing, so this one is definitely about the imagery. There is some writing, um, but it's definitely more about the imagery. Uh, <laughs> I love I love the designs. Um, so yeah, that's a great book. Um, it's uh, by John Cannamaker. So Joe Adamson did the King of Cartoons one. Joe Adamson also wrote uh, Groucho Chico Harpo and sometimes Zeppo which is my favourite book on the Marx Brothers as well so Joe Adamson wrote that and uh, John Cannamaker wrote this one and then there's another lovely book here that again I've kept sealed this is another mad moment where we were like this is so expensive but this is a lovely book um, so Warner Brothers um, The Art of Their Animation films these are massive books but it's good because it, it conveys the, the images better doesn't it if it's huge um, it's got different chapters in it so um, you've got a chapter on the creators of the cartoons you've got characters And here, there's another chapter here where it talks about the new cartoons. It talks about um, Pinky in the Brain and uh, the Animaniacs and stuff like that. Um, and obviously Batman. Um, but it's... Uh, when they did Animaniacs, I'm not sure if you guys know, but uh, that was a deliberate attempt to try and get back the magic of the humour and the timing of those uh, Looney Tunes, Merry Melodies cartoons. And uh, I think they achieved it. I think the Animaniacs cartoons are really funny and brilliant. Uh, and obviously within that you've got Pinky in the Brain and the birds from New York ones. I can't remember what they're called. And uh, I think that's I think Pinky in the Brain also features the uh, the baby that was um, constantly getting out, getting into trouble as well. I think that's in that one as well. 
But uh, I mean, that was a really interesting time because also uh, Freakazoid was made as well, which was really good. Um, that came out of the Warner Brothers staple of the same thing. So there's a real nice, interesting revival. And I'm not sure what studio it was, but Earthworm Jim came out around the same time as well, which I think is amazing. It's one of my favourite things, Earthworm Jim, the cartoon. And uh, it's very different, much more adult. But Duckman came around around the same time as well, sort of early 90s. And I don't know if you know Duckman, but uh, hugely underrated, I think. Moving on to a more general book again, Who's Who in Animated Cartoons by Jeff Lenberg. Uh, this is a really good one. It's got, uh, what's nice about this is obviously the Leonard Moulton one was specifically about American cartoons and this is more of an international one. So, and there's tons and tons of information in there. It's mostly writing. Um, so it's a really good education on cartoons, animated films in general, but it's got lots of European stuff in there and um, some of the, um, the things that are not talked about as much so it's because there's a huge interest in Japanese animation quite rightly um, then people might be interested in the fact that uh, the Studio Ghibli uh, directors are mentioned in this as well so I'm not as much of an expert on Studio Ghibli and I haven't got a book in this collection about Studio Ghibli which is a bit of an omission because I do think um, those films are great especially Spirited Away and Howl's Moving Castle those are my two favourites but uh there's a bunch of really good ones in that series but um yeah that's a nice one because it's international so it covers quite a lot of ground another one that's not enormously general but general enough before i get specific and that's one that focuses on disney so this came out this came out this came out in 95 so obviously it's out of date now but it does cover a lot of ground. And again, it's Leonard Moulton, so it's very detailed. You do learn a lot about the Disney films, and it does cover non-animation as well, but clearly it was a big chunk of their output. So it does um, serve well as another introduction to their animation. And, you know, you could argue it covers their best period because once you get into the 90s and 2000s, they start relying on Pixar and other companies for their income um, which is not to say there aren't any great Disney films since then because clearly Tangled was great and Frozen was great and uh, what else I think Princess and the Frog is a really good one as well but they definitely relied on Pixar for a while once they bought them so um, some more specific ones so we've done we did talk about Tex Avery, but that's really the only specific ones, really specific ones we've done so far. Let's move on to some more. So you've got a lovely book here called The Fleischer Story. Max Fleischer, um, I absolutely love his cartoons and his his inventions, that what he did in his animated films and what his brother Dave did, how the way they came up with these different ways of um, uh, filming and the fact that they invented rotoscoping and the fact that they just, they're, they're so inventive and they're, animation style is so influential and so crazy and if you watch a Betty Boop cartoon she's not the main part of the cartoon it's all the stuff the crazy stuff happening around her that's what makes it great it's only really when you get to Popeye that Max Fleischer is concentrating on an actual character and not having loads of crazy stuff around it but Betty Boop is definitely almost like this sort of static thing in the middle while the inventive stuff is happening around her but Obviously, as an image, she's everywhere. So it's a huge part of American culture. But uh, what it could be understated and underrated and not talked about enough is the invention in Betty Boop's cartoon around her. You know, all the stuff that's happening around her. So, uh, yeah, I think Max Fleischer's cartoons are amazing. And obviously, he did do the original Superman as well. Um, but the Out of the Inkwell stuff is my favourite stuff there with Coco the Clown. So... Max Fleischer, um, hugely underrated man, um, and some you know some of those people that unless you're into animation, you don't know what he did, and you're not, not really aware of how important he was. So, um, <laughs> the big man, uh, Bugs Bunny. There's a there's a lovely uh, 50 year anniversary book about Bugs Bunny. So this is by Joe Adamson again. So his name's popped up again. 
and um, there's a forward by or preface preface by Fritz Freeling and by Chuck Jones so two of the big names in uh, Looney Tunes animation Chuck Jones had a huge part to play in Bugs Bunny most of Bugs Bunny's cartoons um, are Chuck Jones ones he wasn't the person to invent Chuck Jones uh, sorry he wasn't the person to invent Bugs Bunny because that was Tex Avery but Chuck Jones um, gave him loads and loads of character traits that became what he was famous for and all the cheekiness and the um, one-upmanship and his almost Groucho-like wit is definitely a Chuck Jones thing. So, I mean, he moulded D- Daffy Duck in a similar way. So, um, before Chuck Jones got hold of Daffy Duck, and if you think about Bob Clampett's Daffy Duck, Bob Clampett's Daffy Duck was completely mad. And uh, uh, probably my favourite period of Daffy Duck cartoons is Bob Clampett's absolutely crazy uh, characterization of Daffy Duck when he's just like constantly going woo 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 and running around and driving everybody nuts. When Chuck Jones got hold of him, he decided to make him more of a an angry, frustrated adversary to the Bugs Bunny quite often, but sometimes just an angry, um, stressed duck. Uh, except when he did Duck Dodgers. So Chuck Jones did Duck Dodgers, and that was and that was more of a heroic role, but. Again, still with lots of things going wrong, so it still allowed Daffy Duck to get really angry. So, um, and Duck and Muck is a very famous cartoon where Chuck Jones is driving um, Daffy Duck crazy by drawing different things around him, and you can see. So Chuck Jones becomes a character in Duck and Muck because he's changing his his clothes and his his shape and all that while Daffy Duck's getting angry at him. So. Chuck Jones did quite a lot with both characters. Um, but uh, So having a preface there by him is really cool. But this is a celebration of Bugs Bunny 50 years um, after he was, he was created. And it's a really nice book by Jad Anderson. Um, this was a fine. I didn't expect to see this. But in a similar way to finding a book on Bugs Bunny, there's a book just about Tweety Pie and Sylvester. So, um, again, this is a 50-year um celebration um, by Jerry Beck Jerry Beck um, uh, with somebody else uh, Jerry Beck can't remember who the other guy is but they wrote a really good book that I had from the library um, before and I've never owned it but I definitely will get it as part of this collection when I do and it was called Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies I'm pretty sure that was what the title was it was a really good account of every single release so who was in it what happened in it who directed it who wrote it that kind of stuff uh, it's a really good uh, detailed account of all of the Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies cartoons. So that's by Jerry Beck. Um, so he's written this one, which is a celebration of of um, of Sylvester and Tweety Pie. And obviously you've got the sketches like you do in the other books. Um, you've got the Hippity there. Um, you've got all these different things that uh, comment on the development and what happened in the studio itself. And uh, all these other characters that appeared in their cartoons. So, uh, Sylvester the Cat <laughs> and Tweety Pie. Um, so, yeah, we're going to make one. The last book I'm going to do is one more return to Warner Brothers. But we're going to deviate from Warner Brothers for a minute. Um, I have to finish on this other book. You'll see why at the end. But let's talk about MGM. We're going back to MGM, so Tex Avery was MGM, but clearly the most famous product out of the MGM studios, as far as animated shorts go, is Tom and Jerry. So again, it's another 50-year celebration. Um, this one by T.R. Adams. So T.R. Adams wrote this, and uh, again, it's got a similar kind of biograph- biographical stuff and all the information about um, how the Tom and Jerry cartoons were created, as well as loads of sketches and um, stills, like this, actual cells. Um, and uh, you've got, I think here, you've got um, real-life photos from the studio, from the MGM Studios, um, and it really kind of makes it come alive. And there you've got some other mentions of, uh, that was Anchors Away, isn't it, when um, Jerry made a, an appearance in a live action film 
Uh, that's a really early version of live action mixed with animation, that is. And then right at the end of the book, you've got an account of each one of the animated shorts. So again, when they came out, um, if they were Academy Award winners, because lots of them were, and what happened in them. So that's a really nice book about Tom and Jerry. Yeah, I'm going to do one more studio one, and then we're going to do the last four are a little bit different. So this is a really nice book of sketches and ideas from the Pixar studios. So this is a really nice find. This I found this on Forbidden Planet a couple of years ago. It's the most recent book out of the 15 I'm talking about, but it's a really good find. So if you love Pixar movies, which clearly you must do, um, then there's some really nice sketches and cartoons and stuff that they've that the Pixar team have done. Uh, which um, obviously this goes in my cartoonist collection as much as it goes in my animation collection. There's a bit of a crossover. Uh, I mean, on that note, I do think they are related. And I think they're the same part of my brain because clearly great animation, it's not just about comedy and timing, but it's the character design, isn't it? And that's down to being a good cartoonist. So some of the reasons why we love these characters are because of the design and what they look like and the characterization, which ultimately is why you might like some characters in some uh, one panel cartoons that are done by cartoonists. So uh, it definitely is the same part of my brain, I think. So I feel like they're companion collections. So yeah, really nice find that was. Funny exclamation mark. Um, a load of sketches and ideas from Pixar. So this is slightly different because it's more adult, but uh, I've got a really nice, um, very rare book by Terry Gilliam, which is Animations of Mortality. So this is all about um, the animations did for the Monty Python series. Hold on. Fine Circus. And uh, it's literally his animation. So it's, it's got his sketches as well, which is really, really special. And... Uh, you know, it's one of those things that just goes really well if you're looking for this sort of stuff. Um, again, not for this one, not a lot of writing. This is literally um, his cutout technique, all from the Monty Python Flying Circus series. I'm a huge Terry Gilliam fan. Okay, so three to go. This the, the next two I'm going to talk about are academic books on animation. So I think you've got to take these with a pinch of salt. But cultural analysis books are interesting because ultimately they look at uh, when these films are being made and what how do they reflect the attitudes and the morals of, of the society that they are being given to. So I think when you're looking at the characterization of Bugs Bunny and why he acts like he does and... Uh, you're looking at, um, you know, why Pepe Le Pew gets away with what he gets away with, especially in the light of recent times when uh, he's been seen as uh, politically, um, well, outdated, would be a polite way of saying it, how some people say it. Because of that kind of thing, then clearly that makes that makes these, these um, books even more important. And... Even when I was looking at this stuff when I was younger, I knew about some of the, you know, outright racist stuff that was being brought out by these studios in the 40s. And, uh, you know, some of the stuff that was done during the wartime, the sort of anti-Japanese cartoons and some you know, and early in, that, in the 30s, some of the um, horrendous representation of of the black community is is, you know, is part of their history. So that's fascinating as well. But um these two books here, so Reading the Rabbit, you know, reading it in a more sociological way, um, analysing it philosophically, if you like. Um, that's an interesting book. It's a very interesting academic book on animation. If you like the idea of that kind of thing, it's very good for that. And that's by Kevin Sandler. Well, it's edited by Kevin Sandler, so actually there's different, um, there's different essays from different people. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, this one called... Um, Selling Bugs Bunny, Warner Brothers and a character merchandise in the 90s. Um, so, you know, they cover different kind of things. Talks about Space Jam at one point. Uh, yeah, here we go. Hybrid cinema. you got got Tex Avery in the mask there talking about that. So clearly it doesn't just talk about Warner Brothers. The temporary Disneyfication of 
Warner Brothers cartoons. It's really, it's, it's, I haven't read this in years, but it's a really interesting book on looking at, you know, delving a little deeper into the product of these studios. And this one um, is really good. I like this one. It's got a forward by Chuck Jones. It's called Serious Business. And it's about the art and commerce of animation in America. So it looks at, um, again, how it gets sold, how successful certain things are, what works, what doesn't, and how that works between, you know, the the um, artistry versus the commercial potential of this product, and uh, goes into different things. Go, covers Toy Story as well, so it goes um, right up to date as well. So this is not too old. Um, he says that, knowing as he's saying that, knows he knows how old Toy Story is. Let's have a look. Uh, Ninety seven. Yeah, this was made in 97, so still over 20 years old. Um, so, there's that one. And then just to finish, as really, I ought to finish with this, knowing what it's called. That's all, folks. So, this is the art of Warner Brothers Animation. So, just like those other books with a similar shape, this looks at how these cartoons were made. Loads of lovely um, cells from the um, actual films printed in there, as well as sketches and some ideas, and lots of biographical information about the creators. And this is by Steve Schneider. Um, and Ray Bradbury does the forward, which is kind of interesting, isn't it? Um, so if, you're, if you've are if you seen some of the stuff in the, my channel before, then you know I love Ray Bradbury, and probably lots of you guys do as well that watch this. So that's all, folks. And uh, that's all, folks. See you later. Bye. <laughs> that's all, folks.